Hi, it's Chris, and we're working again on the uh, 500 Rev 5 that was kindly donated from Michael. So I wired a uh, 205 with pin 1 to 31. That way it allows me to be able to uh, select boot, so I can select a uh, GoTech or whatever to boot from. I was waiting for a uh, package from Australia, which was an NTSC USA keyboard with some nice keys, tannish keys. Uh, I wanted to just test the keyboard to make sure everything was cool. Now this keyboard doesn't have the normal split. So we're going to hook this up. We're going to get it all fired up on a workbench. This 1.3 or something like that real quick. So I can test the um, keyboard and make sure it works. Then we're going to go dig in the archives and put her in a case and bring her back to life. Okay, so getting to the keyboard here. This keyboard has all of the wires, eight of them. Normally there's seven. Um, the leftmost wire is always pin one, which is keyboard data. And then there's a clock sync and some other stuff. The uh, orange would be five volt. And magic happens. On your keyboard there's a little uh, square knob for showing you which pin is what. And it also says pin one on there. So pin one on the left. Power helps. This is a red uh, red keyboard. You can see the floppy drive light works. So keyboard tests. I'm just going to scroll through the lines here. So we're 100% on keyboard. So that's cool. We are good to go on everything. So let's get the belly slot back in it and put this in a case and find a floppy drive for it and make this Amiga 500 Rev 5 live again. We're going to the bowels of the old studio. As you can tell, it's a little bit of a mess. Uh, stuff everywhere. The totes from Commodore I've never opened yet. Parts everywhere, Amiga junk. But, this box, has something special in it. So, this box is, of course, an Amiga 500 box. When I worked for Commodore, uh, we were to take all the RMAs back to Westchester for credit and parts return, except the company kind of folded right at the end. So all of us employees just grabbed all of the Rubbermaid totes, threw them in our cars, and that was that. Nowhere to turn them into. It was either the garbage bin or your basement. So for the past 30-something years, I've had RMAs in my basement. Now the ones, they're majority Amiga 500s, a couple 12s, um, I think a couple 2000s. I had a 1000 at the time. I believe I sold that on eBay years ago. And I don't even want to tell you what I sold it for because it's embarrassing. And I have every model except the 3 and the 4000 towers and a CDTV. So for this one, still has its styrofoam, its packaging, all of the original uh, Commodore bagging, the power supply, junk. It's not in here, this is just boxes. Uh, this was the original Commodore Amiga 500 box, not the packs and the, the, the whatever the hell kits they are in the United Kingdom. We'll put that over there. So this is going to be this unit's housing. Still got the old Commodore screws in here. Uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania, A500, the normal stuff, California, serial number 28134. So it's pretty low in the totem pole. This would be around a Rev 5, which is what this one is. This has the uh, keyboard. I got a Rev 5 keyboard with the red lights. We're going to go ahead and kind of put this together. Uh, the Commodore screws are T10 hex. The short ones go in the front and the long ones go in the back. I do not have the base shielding, so I will not be able to put that in. And I do have top shieldings, but since I plan to be in this thing more than Kanye was in Kim Kardashian, I'm going to uh, leave the shielding out. So there you go. You can see it's in pretty good color. It's not a lot. There's no damage on it. There's no cracks. The coloring is normal. <sighs> Clean. Clean enough. 
we're going to put this in. Now, without a base, I'm only going to be able to tap into the screw holes directly into the plastic. The grounding is going to be handled through the power supply mains. Because here in America, where Jesus lives, we have a grounding system that grounds our devices out to earth through the power grid. And your shielding and stuff, it really doesn't matter anymore. One A500 motherboard in a case. In the normal Amiga 500 in the back shielding that all the little dudes populate. I will get the 500 floppy mount for this. Okay, so there's our 500 512K RAM expansion. Now for this model, this has the 8370 Agnes. Floppy power, we're going to have to do another time once I get the floppy system in there. And this will be recapped. Carefully insert that. Look at that monstrosity. The yellow keys match the unit. So here we go. Here's our Amiga 500 repaired. We got the GoTech for boot device. Have not put the case screws in yet. This is my Repop power supply from Poland. Red light. You know, turn the monitor on might help a little bit. Floppy access. It's booting Amiga test kit off the ADF. Two O-ROMs have a boot selector where it will automatically boot. There's working. I'm gonna pull this out and reboot it one more time. Press the help key, let it restart. Should be the two O-ROM. Now remember, no floppy, it's gonna take a second to show the ROM. 2.0 ROMs, 37. 75 from Commodore way back in the day with the old check mark purple screen floating disc in we are the red light correct uh, Rev 5 got to do a little bit of a uh, work to show this we should have a red caps lock too as you can see here in order so there's a functional Rev 5 Amiga I'm gonna boot Amiga test kit again just by inserting the ADF into the external drive and we'll go to uh, memory. I guess I don't need to hold the power supply. And you'll see we have one mega RAM, half mega chip. This can be modded with uh, one mega chip. This does need a thorough cleaning. This keyboard looks like somebody barfed all over it or had just finger butter. You know, years of use. They're going to need a retro bright. Maybe I'll leave it alone. I don't know. All in all, this keyboard is pretty good. I picked this up in Australia. Test all memory, let's just go for it. Test everything. The 512K on the board and the 512 in the belly slot. 512K board is working fine. Keyboard we saw works perfectly. Keyboard totally functional. Video totally fine. Totally fine. No battery backed up clock. Mouse you know, works. I don't have a controller hooked up. Audio. Filtering light is working. On the Revision 5, when you do a filter on, you get no light. Check this out. I'm going to be turning the filter light off and on. So here's filter on, here's filter off. It doesn't show a dim light, it doesn't show a different light, it's just off. Normally on the other Amigas it would be a brighter light and a dim. That's just how it works back then. You forget a lot of things when you don't use them all the time. The noise you're hearing, I am 3D printing some floppy brackets for this bad boy. What are we doing? Um, last I left off, the Amiga 500 was working. It is a revision 204 ROM. 512 fast, 512 chip. As you recall, JP2 was originally screwed up where I had to alter the location to two solder points. I have since undone that and relocated to the top two points. There are three jumper points. Normally, you slice this and you bridge the solder between the center and the top. By default, the factory center point and bottom solder point are bridged with a single thing you normally slice. Since the center pin was totally gone, I'm gonna zoom in on this. This jumper here is gone in the middle. I originally bridged these two points right here, this one and this one, to uh, connect the center and lower again but now I have gone to the alternate point here to the original center point down here and a continuity check results in a beep which I will do again from the top point to the ground here 
you can hear its continuity. So that means we are set for the next step. The stock Agnes is an 8370. That needs to come out. The best way to do that is with a long tooth PLCC extractor. These come in two formats, short and long. Short meaning the pins are very close or longer. This is the longer model. There are two points and two slots. It simply goes into the slot. Make sure you're under the chip. Simply squeeze and pull up. Here's your original Agnes. Note its orientation. There is a dot on the edge of the pin which points towards you. Also, the big number one right here. Grab an 8372A. This Agnes can address up to one mega of RAM. To install it, just simply find your dot. Make sure you're lined up. Give it up. And you're done. That's the 8372A Agnes. Now, there's one other jumper, and this depends on your RAM expansion. This is a Rev 5. So JP7 here, which is the, it's actually the eighth pin down off of this. There's a single jumper point. Ouch. You have to slice. So we get booting. All right, so this don't look good. If this Agnes is even good, this Agnes may be bad. We'll see what it says. Booting Amiga test kit again. This Agnes is bad. Not good at all. That's not working. There it is. Checking all my pins here just to make sure they're all groovy. We're in. Like Flynn, Agnes number two. That should be okay. I'm gonna grab my keyboard here. We're gonna plug this back in. Amiga test kit is in the GoTech. Let's just hit the button. Keyboard lights red and green. GoTech should start in a second if we're successful. GoTech in. Memory, hot dang, one, whoop, one meg of chip, as you can see right there. Yes, I like to point a lot. A lot of you have given me quite notice in my comments that I point to the screen a lot. Because I'm close up, I don't use my capture card because of the delay it provides, but the Amiga 500 R5 has one mega chip. I have the helmet of Gubaron clarifying my victory over this machine. So that's a quick Amiga update. I'll get the uh, floppy drive printed. We'll get that installed and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so as fate would have it, I put a pie storm in there. But I previously, in one of my own stupidities, I plugged my Raspberry Pi in one pin off of the uh, GPIO header and then the pie storm suddenly didn't work anymore. I replaced the Raspberry Pi thing and I just popped the Pi. The GPIOs blow on those so easy if you're an idiot like me. Replace the Pi. Zero, yeah, zero 02W. We're jamming along. Amiga 500. Pi Storm. Pi zero 02W. Is it perfect? No. She said on a 68030, 881, 17 megaflops, 16815. Now this is uh, 31 times faster than itself regularly. I don't know about that, 24, 24 times faster than itself. Great, and we have RTG ability. Now I'm in a Pi Storm RTG, and she looks totally beautiful. Look at those magic workbench icons in all their glory. So how does this compare to the 3A here? I don't really know. The cool thing about this Pi Zero 2W is it's a little bit less intrusive size-wise. She's a little thin tank here and uh, <coughs> rocking along just fine. Raspberry Pi could probably use a heat sink. Let's see what it's running at. Uh, 55 Celsius. So the Pi Storm is cooking a little bit on the on the 2W2, yep, 0 w zero two that one. There we go. How's that? That looks that looks professional. Perfect. I'm going to tilt this up, which I shouldn't do, but I'm going to anyway. And you can see in here, you can see that I have plenty of room and it's not moving. This is pretty stiff. It's not like the 3A where she's wobbly. Uh, the parts just finished on the 3D printer in Jesse PLA. I had to do some, uh, get some stringing, but uh, I'll let these cool for a minute before I pop them off. 
hour and 38 minutes to print that. Can you believe how loud that printer is? Sorry about that. There we go. All that just to play a game. There's some suckers. Shotgun. Let's see it. Here it is. Now I'm missing one secret. Love this game, by the way. There's the key. But anyway, that's it. Items 4 of 4, secrets 3 of 4. I know it's got a good par. 516 for me. Awesome sauce. Uh, I want to see what the temperature is here. We are at 48C. The heat sinks are helping. Alright, we're at 52C and holding. What else can we do that cranks this sucker up? There we go. That's what freaking Andy Warhol did, right? Debbie Harry. And they called it Masterpiece. I made a flower. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to bore you with continued stuff. That is the Amiga 500 with the Pi Storm. And she's on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 now because it fits. Not really. But I got a bag underneath of it. So that makes it perfect. I'm going to run the RTG out the side. I'm going to 3D print myself a little lid there. And uh, get something going there. So another Amiga saved, another Amiga upgraded, and we'll put her in service in rotation in the fleet. So I have 19 Amigas now, and 8 that do not work. 8 that are in bins from when I left work doing service for Commodore. We had totes of RMAs, and then they went out of business, so we kept them. They've been in totes ever since. I have not looked at them, not checked on them in many years. None of them were battery candidates, a lot of 500s, a couple 12s. I think I had a 1000 in a box that I did find an eBay receipt that I apparently sold it long ago for really cheap, and that was a dumb move. But I have several over there left, a couple 2000s that don't work. I'm going to use this Agnes to repair one of those, so we'll have another 2000 back in service. It needs a case. So, but that's all I got for now. Amiga number 19 added to the household. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps someone out there. And if you are a moron like myself and do stupid things like I do and plug your Raspberry Pi in incorrectly and blow your Pi Storm up, check those little tiny uh, NF capacitors. They're real super simple to swap out and... You know, I should have did that before I bought a replacement unit, but that just gives me an excuse to put that in something else. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.